My name is Dilip Jajodia. I'm the owner and managing director of British Cricket Balls Limited. We produce top-end cricket balls and distribute it worldwide under the iconic Dukes brand, which has been around since 1760. We are based here in East London uh, in a very modest factory. We keep a low profile and we just get on with the job. I was a fast bowler in my early days and then as I got older I ended up becoming an off-spinner. Ever since I've been involved with the company, the paramount thing has been the very best raw materials, starting with the leather. And we source the leather from the same tannery over all these years. We insist it's from Scotland because we believe that it makes the best cricket ball. So we cut the strips and we select the very two centre strips for if you like test match cricket. That is so important because the, the strength of the leather lies from the back downwards. The key is with our balls, which are fully hand stitched, that we put the cups together where the fit is good and then the middle two rows of stitching, which is called, that's called the actual seam, holds the ball together to start with and then the outer two rows on either side of the centre rows are fully hand stitched going backwards and forwards. So essentially with our product, the stitching is going all the way through from both sides and giving it the firmness and the, and the strength of uh, tension. It's a craftsman's business, you know, you really have to be dedicated. It's almost like a vocation to become a cricket ball stitcher. We've been encouraging people to carry on in the tradition of working father to son and training them and so on. And the people we employ, some of them are third generation cricket ball stitchers. There are essentially 80 stitches that goes around the circumference. And they just use their eye to get 80 stitches in. It's quite remarkable. So this skill of poking the, the awl into the leather and spacing it and going through and coming back is, is quite astonishing. And it takes a guy over an hour to do one ball, you know, because the entire ball takes three and a half man hours to make. But the stitching part alone takes over an hour. So, you know, a good stitcher could make between seven and eight balls a day. That's the degree of how much it goes into making a cricket ball. Once the ball is actually stitched, uh, the seam is actually quite raised, so you have to push it into shape. So we have a process which presses it all down and gives the ball a really good shape. The six rows of stitching holding the ball together, you know, much more uh, tightly, in my view, is a key because the machine stitch ball cannot achieve the same tightness. We then go through the process of each ball being weighed, put through rings to make sure that they're the right size and the right weight. Having selected the very best balls, we have to test them for bounce as well. So we carry out a bounce test. Once all that's done, the balls are ready for stamping. So they go through to the guy who does the stamping, it's heat, heat sealed gold foil stamping. So that identifies the ball as, shall we say, first class cricket balls. After the stamping, we go through to a process called milling, where the ball is put in for final shaping. So that the balls come out of there stamped and in perfect shape. After that, there's one more process before the final polishing, and that's called lamping. And the lamping process is to spread the grease which is in the leather evenly so that it gives it a good look and it also works well in the game. So once that's done, it goes through for final polishing because that helps the bowler to swing or whatever he wants to do with the ball. The product is of the very best quality and it's good for cricket because there's got to be a certain amount of obsolescence built into the product. So it's not just a ball that looks perfectly nice after a day's play, it's got to deteriorate gradually. And it's that deterioration and how you achieve it, which is what's in the skill of the product. And then there's a final selection of 12 balls per test match. And I personally get involved at this stage to make sure that I pick the best balls. So it's finally my feel of the ball that decides what goes in the box. It's very satisfying while I sit in the pavilion 
watching a test match, knowing that the balls in the hands of Jimmy Anderson and Stuart Broad and all the other bowlers, including the opposition, have also been through my hands because I selected them specially for the game. Knowing all the detail of what goes into making it, I can't help but be a person who looks at it and loves it.